Welcome you back to the Patrick Netherton Show right here on 1130 The Tiger. He's Roger Sampton. I'm Patrick Netherton. We're pleased to welcome in our go-to correspondent for NHL News. Uh, the NHL making some news here in uh, the last 24 hours. He is the television voice of the Pittsburgh Penguins and uh, does a lot of work for NHL Network as well. Former Shreveport Mudbugs play-by-play man Steve Mears. Mearsy, how are you, man? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, quite quite welcome. We we always start here though uh, because of you know what what times we're living in. How's the family? How are your friends? How's everyone doing? Everyone okay right now? Yeah, everybody's fine. No, uh, it's been okay. It really, I'd much rather be doing hockey games right now. But uh, the last two and a half months has really flown by. I, I mean, I. Boredom is not a word in my vocabulary. I'm, I'm always there's always things to do and stuff to read and watch, and especially in this day and age with technology. And I'm here playing the guitar and cooking a lot and doing all these things. Uh, so it's been fun. It's been uh, it's been fun, all things considered. With uh, obviously, we'd rather be back doing what we all love to do. But uh, in the meantime, just trying to make the most of this this downtime. And uh, it, it really has flown by. We were actually going to be the first team to play a game with no fans back in March when this all arrived. Mm-hmm. And then it was eventually on that game day, we were all in Columbus, just kind of waiting in a hotel in Columbus with the players and the staff. And and then eventually the NHL paused their season. But uh, it, it has really flown by. And now with the news yesterday, it looks like uh, we could be getting back to some hockey here soon. Uh, I, I, by the way, I didn't realize you were such a renaissance man over here cooking and guitar and all. I mean, man. <laughs> You're, uh, I didn't, I didn't know you had so many talents, man. Besides just, you know, um, well, I don't have talents. That's for sure. Well, there uh, are, there, you know, there are in talents, but they're attempts at least. Okay. I'm trying my best here. I've got like a year's worth of guitar practice and a little bit longer there in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, there's all, there's so much like technology. It's unbelievable with, uh, how about all the classic games we've been able to watch, whether it's NHL network or MLB network. And, uh, here in Pittsburgh, we've aired a lot of the, the Stanley cup classic mm-hmm. games and, and all the sports networks have done that. So you get to relive some of these memories, and uh, obviously not as good as, uh, as live sports and all the games that we love, but still it's, uh, it's been nice to reminisce a little bit and uh, kind of get outside your comfort zone as well, do some things that you may not be used to doing this time of year. Absolutely. All right, before we get into the, the NHL topics, uh, the question we've been asking all day today is we were watching the, the launch of the, the rocket, which didn't happen, uh, got postponed, but would you go into space if given the opportunity? I saw the question on Facebook, and I was prepared for the answer. I was actually thinking about the question even before I heard that you were asking it, because uh, I was thinking of the same thing. Would I, would I go if they had space tourism? And the a- answer is a thousand percent yes. Mm. I would go, absolutely. Are you crazy? I mean, that's, who would pass that up? Well, I okay, here's I, the thing. Here's the thing, Mirzi. you, you got to put me in like a shuttlecraft from Star Trek. That's that's like a car, because if you're trying to put me in that tiny little capsule and strap me down, my claustrophobia ain't ain't having that. <laughs> so if you can give yeah, me like a nice, a, if you can give me the Winnebago from from Spaceballs, then I'm in. It might be a Tesla. I mean, think of it, if Elon Musk is in charge. Yeah. it's going to be pretty nice, you would think, based on the cars. So uh, yeah, I would uh, I would imagine it would be fairly expensive. So it would have to be in my price range. I'd like to maybe check off a few boxes and make sure things are, are relatively safe and that yeah. it's going to be okay and be able to return to Earth's surface. But for one trip, I know they talked about one of them was like you could go up and just visit the space station. That is just a dream. And then there's another one where you could orbit the Earth even higher than the space station. And uh, that you could be on that short list of people that have been to outer space. Come on. I, I would jump all over that for... Like let's say six figures. Well, no, I'd I, 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 it would be it would be free. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't make you pay anything for it. It would be a free trip to wow. space. But but here's the thing: I'm going to put you in that little tiny capsule that they that they're going in at the top of that rocket. I'm not letting you go in a Winnebago, right? So hey, so did, I mean, are you, you cool know, with strapping that thing in and getting in that little tiny capsule? You must not have ever seen our Shreveport Mudbug bus that we traveled in <laughs> at the bunk back in the day, and specifically the bunk for the radio guy. Yeah. We, we might go back in time, and uh, I'll show you some pictures of the, what those conditions were like, and you'll think that 
claustrophobia just doesn't – it's not going to – be a problem whatsoever. Hey, you could be in that little what I call the coffin on the mud boat spot. We actually, uh, we actually rode in that thing with the battle wings. the The first two years of the battle wings yeah. existence, we actually took a couple of trips on the big sleeper bus that the mud bugs had, and uh, and it was it was an experience, man. I'm not going to lie. That's that you know I don't I don't know why you put that many people in there. It was it was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely an experience riding on that thing. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, especially going from Shreveport to Colorado. Right. It's not like it was just an hour long. Yeah, you're not going to Dallas. State. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, so, Mearsy, let's talk about this. Talking to Steve Mears from uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins NHL Network, does a lot of work on television. Um, let's talk about this plan that Gary Bettman came out with yesterday. Um, kind of a, a nebulous plan in terms of when or if this happens. But the you know the plan is twenty four teams get in, uh, looking like it's going to be kind of a hey we're gonna we're gonna freeze the regular season right where it's at we're gonna go right into the playoffs that kind of thing. Give me your thoughts on what you were thinking when you first saw this. I love it, and I know there are some reasons why a, a Pittsburgh Penguins fan may not love it because they were pretty much guaranteed to be in the playoffs, and now you have to play what is kind of a crapshoot just to get in now against right. a relatively good team like the Montreal Canadiens that have a really good goaltender. So there's a reason here in Pittsburgh to be apprehensive and to not be a fan of it at all. But uh, first and foremost, we just want to play some hockey. We want it to be done as safely as possible, and the players in the league have emphasized that. And I, I just think it's fantastic that the NHL got out in front of this and uh, have had this plan in the works now for a while. A lot of cooperation with the Players' Union, a lot of great leadership from Gary Bettman. And look, compared to some of the other leagues like the NBA or Major League Baseball, here's the NHL, and they come out. They've got it all ready to go. As soon as they get the clearance, I, I just give Gary Bettman, Bill Daly, the league, and the players full marks for uh, just for taking the lead. They're, they're not followers here. They're not just waiting to see what the NBA will do because the NBA is a more prominent league. They're doing their own thing, and they have made it a priority that they want to finish the season they want to award the Stanley Cup, and uh, fans and players have, have uh, voiced that same opinion. So uh, I love the idea. I love that more teams are involved. They're trying to make it as equitable as possible. You had some bubble teams that shouldn't have been punished. They, maybe they were going to get in. There were about 12 games left approximately in the regular season for most teams on average. So you have to at least give them a shot, and I think this plan does that. Do you do you see any logistical problems at all with? Yeah, you know, I know that there's talk that it'll be based, and this is what I, I keep talking about, Steve. On uh, because we talk a lot about college football and college basketball here on this show, we're we're very college centric. Um, the pros, this is much easier to do. Sequester the teams in a couple of cities. Uh, frequent testing. The ability to be able to control this thing and sort of quarantine the teams yourself is so much greater. Um, Do you see any logistical issues potentially with trying to put all of these teams maybe in two or three cities and then just playing it that way? Yeah, I think that that's part of the big question and the many questions that are, that are floating out there. I mean, it's nice to have a plan, but let's not be fooled. There's still a lot that has to be determined and ironed out before this plan becomes a reality. So uh, that is one of the things, like the amount of testing, the frequency of the test. Can you have that many teams in one city when they narrow it down, the two hub cities? It's going to be, it's going to have to be a place that can house a lot of people and mm-hmm. staff members. And I mean, obviously Las Vegas is the first one that comes to mind with the amount of hotels and the fact they have a beautiful rink. They have a couple of rinks now and, and a big main arena right on the Vegas Strip. So uh, that would be one in the Western Conference. I know Pittsburgh is one of the cities that's uh, is, putting in a bid, and we have a lot of great facilities here too. But, uh, yeah, and, and the players, there have been some players who have voiced that concern. It's like, what, how is this going to go? And their legitimate concerns, are they going to have to be sequestered in a hotel for basically two months? What happens if there's a family emergency? Will they be able to visit their family and leave? Will they be able to have some type of a normal life because they're not going to be playing games every day? Mm-hmm. So how is it all going to be work? How is the training the how is the food service going to work? I mean, these are all the things. It's, it's nice to look at the the standings and think about the series and the matchups and all that. But there are a lot of practical concerns which the players have, including the 
the salaries and how it's going to work and everything. Uh, so, yeah, with uh, what happens if a player does get the virus test positive, does that shut everything down? So there, there are all these questions, and they're just being juggled and, and uh, talk, talked about within the NHL. Uh, but at least, though, a plan is in place, and if they do get the clearance and they're able to get some of these answers, then they'll be ready to go. And the players with a, about a three-week training camp, they'll be ready to go as well. Have you? Do you have the, the, the chance or do you get the chance to, to communicate with the players while they're going through this? I know you, know you work for the Penguins, so I mean, do you get a chance to chat with some of these guys from time to time or players from any of the teams and, and just kind of get their read on what they feel about not only this plan but just – everything that's been going on in general? Not so much one-on-one mm-hmm. because uh, the players have been doing their own thing. Some are even back in their home countries now and have been for a while. Yeah. But the, the Penguins have done a great job of keeping all of the broadcasters and media members apprised of what the team is doing. Uh, and they've had various guys available on Zoom and, and have done some conference calls with the head coach and the general manager and some of the prominent players. So, uh, uh, most of the, the the message has been the same. They want to get back. They want to complete the season, especially a team like Pittsburgh, which was considered a Stanley Cup contender for the most part, had a very impressive season, except for maybe the last week or so, but had overall been one of the Stanley Cup contenders despite a whole host of injuries all year long. So I, I don't blame them. And these windows, we know, the sports world, this, these windows, especially when you're a team that has Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, the windows – are not infinite. You're not going to be able to have this opportunity for much longer, especially when you, your best players are getting into their mid-30s. So uh, it's a matter of just uh, wanting to take advantage of a great opportunity, which uh, we thought we had here in Pittsburgh with the caliber of team that they've got, that they've assembled this season. And, uh, and just most, and foremost, most of all, just trying to get back to doing what you love to do, whether you're a broadcaster, a coach, or a player, you want to get back to work. Absolutely. Talking to Steve Mears, play-by-play voice on television for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and uh, does a lot of work on NHL Network as well. Um, all right, so as a guy who's not a, a hockey diehard, uh, you know, I kind of follow it, uh, you know, I kind of keep up. Um, I love, you know, I love the story of the blues that happened, uh, you know, especially with glory and all that stuff. That's the stuff that resonates with me. What are some of the things that were going on in the regular season in the NHL that you were most disappointed that the stoppage basically did not allow to continue? I really don't remember. It's been (laughs) no, no, I'm kidding. I do love. I love that you started off with Gloria, yeah, because like how random was that? That Uh, just the fact that it was that song, yeah. And I was there. I did the whole final series, and and like every time now for the rest of my life when I hear that song. I'm going to think of the St. Louis Blues yeah. and that Stanley Cup final and the whole arena singing it. It was crazy. So uh, very random, that, that whole story. They went to a bar in Philadelphia and it played, and then the team was there on a Super Bowl party, and it just caught on with the, with the team and became their song. It was It's just uh, one of the quirks of last year. But as far as this year goes, uh, there are a lot of storylines. I think maybe the, the biggest thing is just in hockey, the emergence of so many good young players that uh, – have been recent high draft choices and now are a part of this new generation. I mentioned Crosby, uh, who is a part of, was still one of the best players in the world, but it was kind of one of the previous generation along with Alex Ovechkin. And now there's a new crop that's coming up, whether it's Connor McDavid, uh, Leon Dreisaitl, who's the top scorer. He's from Germany, plays for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Jack Eichel in Buffalo, Austin Matthews in Toronto. I think that's one of the most impressive things. Uh, you had Alex Ovechkin in another goal-scoring year for him, getting close to 50 goals. And, and uh, one of the big storylines is uh, throughout the entire year, as he continues to score, is will he, will he be able to break Wayne Gretzky's goal-scoring record? I think that's one of the storylines, especially if he reached some big milestones this year. I think that is within reach for Ovechkin. But now I, there's some question because of the time off, the time missed for Ovechkin, Will he be at the top of his game when we do get back to a regular season next year at some point? Mm-hmm. But that is within his grasp because he's so prolific a goal scorer. He could catch Wayne Gretzky, which at one point was thought to be impossible. Uh, and then just the various teams uh, that uh, were at the top of the standings, Boston Bruins, Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, Vegas Golden Knights have been an amazing story since they came into the league. And uh, so many other teams, Washington Capitals, having a pretty good year in the Metropolitan Division as well. So uh, a lot of good storylines around the NHL. It's just a shame that uh, everything got 
pause as it did, but uh, at least there's a plan to maybe see some of those storylines answered. Uh, one last question for you, uh, Mirzi, and, and that is, is there a team uh, in this now this new format where basically you go from uh, you know you go from the regular 16 team playoff bracket to a 24 team bracket? Is there someone in that bottom eight? Is there a team in that bottom eight that maybe you know uh, had injuries early and a struggle, but they've come on late? Is there a team that could could jump out and surprise out of that bottom eight? when you know, maybe some circumstances early in the season didn't lead them to have the record they wanted? Yeah, that's, I, I think those teams are going to be at an advantage. I really do. I, I think to be able to jump right in and be playing for your playoff life, mm-hmm. as opposed to the top-tier teams who are just playing for seeding, and that'll be nice to just get back to game action, but to go right into is what Mike Sullivan will call a high-stakes environment, I think that's really going to be beneficial. It's only a best-of-five series. Maybe the, the next round or the first round of the playoffs would be also best of five. They haven't determined that just yet. So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of teams, uh, a few that immediately come to mind. Well, Pittsburgh here, for one thing, a player like Jake Gensel, who is probably going to be out for the season now, he's going to be able to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got a team like Tampa. They had lost Steven Stamkos due to a core muscle surgery. He was going to be out for months well into the playoffs. Now he's going to be completely healthy. They were already a very good team. They're one of those top tier teams. And then another one that comes to mind is Vegas. And uh, Vegas is a team that made a coaching change. They just have so much team, good team concepts, so much energy within that market. And uh, they've done just about everything right since they came into the NHL, including going to the Stanley Cup final in their first year. Uh, and one of their best players, Mark Stone, was also a guy who was going to be out for a long period of time missing part of the playoffs, and now he's going to be at 100%. So I look at some of those teams that thought they had prominent players that were going to be done for, and they're getting them back now, get this reprieve that they never thought was possible. So those are some names there. Stamkos, Gensel here in Pittsburgh, Mark Mm -hmm. Stone in Vegas. These guys are going to be back, and they're going to be healthy, and I think it completely changes the game for where we would have been if the Stanley Cup playoffs had started on time. Yeah. Uh, Pick me one team out of that bottom eight that might surprise uh, one team out of the bottom eight. I'm going to go with the Edmonton Oilers. Okay. They are, uh, they're, they've got two of the best players in the world. I mentioned them earlier, McDavid and Dreisaitl. Uh, yeah, who knows? There, there's a lot of questions about their, their defense, but just the fact that they're charged up and they have that high-end talent, who knows? Maybe they, they shock some people and uh, do much better than anyone would have thought. Mirza, you're the best, man. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, uh, look forward to your... I guess getting on YouTube and playing guitar for everyone and becoming a YouTube star in that way, I, I'm, I'm, assume, I'm assuming that's right around the corner for you. Um, stay safe out there, man, and uh, definitely looking forward to catching back up with you, hopefully when the NHL season resumes. I don't want to insult any of the real musicians out there by doing that and putting my nonsense out <laughs> online, but uh, I'd be happy to cook for you anytime you want. Hey. That's something I can do, and I actually have some skill there. Giddy up. I'm t- that's what I'm talking about. You know the way to my heart, Mirzi. No doubt about that. <laughs> hey, be safe out there, man. Look forward to chatting back back with you when the NHL you season too. gets going. Thank you so much. Great talking with you. All right. Steve Mears, television play-by-play voice for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, and 